Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about how to feel more desired in your relationship because there's a lot of things that prevent us from feeling desired, maybe past infidelity, maybe a lack of boundaries somewhere in our past, and it's influencing how we're looking for a new relationship or how we feel in our current relationship. So stay the end. I'm going to talk about a few really quick things that you can clear in order to feel, feel more desirable. But first, here's the show reel. What? One of the biggest challenges that I see is that a lot of us have experienced some kind of infidelity in past relationships. And even if we think that we're over it, often that can set up an unconscious mind pattern of feeling like we're not good enough or we're not desirable. Perhaps we start having self-doubt or in our current relationship, we start looking for signs that our partner doesn't really love us in the way that we want them to. Have you ever been a little bit self-conscious about how your partner's interacting with you? So this is why it's so important to really tune in and see how do you feel about yourself, your own attractiveness, your own desirability, and your own sexuality. Because think about this now. Perhaps in the past, you had someone that didn't treat you so well. Perhaps they talked down to you. Perhaps they were picking up other people or flirting with other people with or without you being around. And it started setting up a feeling inside of yourself that you need to do more. You need to be more. Perhaps you need to lose weight or gain weight or be stronger or be more fun or be more smart. And you start getting these ideas in your head about how you are not enough. Now imagine instead that as you let go and take that past situation as a learning experience, you start to step into your own power. You start to communicate your needs with your current partner. Have you ever heard of the five love languages? See, we all feel love in different ways. We all feel appreciated in different ways. So for example, you can go and take the love language test and it'll tell you, how do you actually feel loved? Is it by receiving gifts? Is it by people doing acts of service? In other words, doing things for you. Is it about people just spending time with you, whether or not they're actually engaging with you? So like just knowing that they're around in the house or you're sitting together on the couch watching a movie together. Perhaps it's touch. You need a lot of hugs or a lot of consolation, putting hands on the shoulders, holding hands. So knowing what your love language is can help you ask for what you want from your partner in a way that you feel desirable and that you feel loved. Because we get to let go of those past experiences and really become powerful in our own present moment. And we, when we find a place of self-love, self-acceptance, self-worth, self-joy, by letting go of those past experiences, now we can really step into our power with our own current relationship. We can ask for what we want, what we need, and we can be more clear about it. Even if that means like, hey, I've been playing with the five love languages and I feel like I realized I need more touch or I need more time together. And I know that might be a challenge for you. However, this is what I need in order to feel secure in our relationship. What can I do for you in return? And open up the conversation with your partner because then not only can you be getting what you want, but you make sure that you're communicating your desire and your passion and your connection to your partner in the way that they want to. Wouldn't that be great? Because we may be trying to show our partner that we care and that they're valuable and that they're desired in a way that they can't hear it. So in other words, perhaps we're giving them a bunch of gifts because we like being give gifts, but really what they want is for you to do something for them, for you to take something off their plate that's really stressing them out. And that's what makes them feel loved and appreciated and wanted and desired. So you see, when we really start tuning into ourselves and our partners, when we come from a place of giving, of self-love, of healing our own old past wounds, we can really create a better life for ourselves. 
Isn't that great? Yes. So I encourage you to play with those couple of things. Really find that self-love. Really start communicating with your partner. Figure out your love language. Figure out how you can express your love language or your, your partner's love language with your partner. And really move forward powerfully together. And if it doesn't seem to be working, sit down with that. And figure out why is this not working anymore? Is it coming from a place of fear and worry? Or is it that we've actually outgrown each other and we've learned everything we can in this relationship together and now it's time to move on and find something that really suits us both in a more authentic and loving way. So comment below, just one little comment so I know that you've watched this video and that you're even thinking about this. You can even just say like, hey, I'm from Minneapolis or hey, I'm from Texas or hey, I'm from Argentina because I'm curious to see that. And I look forward to seeing you next time and remember that you are loved you are loving and you are lovable.